In this video, we're going to take a look at the Autodesk Inventor 2012 part modeling enhancements. The first one we're going to take a look at is a nice enhancement for the sweep tool. Uh, this is something that's been brought down from the lip tool from the plastic part features. So basically allows us to create a sweep a little bit faster. Right now I have a profile that I want to create a swept path along a X, Y, and Z change. And traditionally, if you're going to use the lip tool, you can use the path edges and also a guide face to control this. Now, if this was just a more traditional sweep, you weren't using plastic features for it, uh, you might have to create a, a 3D sketch and include the edges. So it's just a little bit extra work. Here I can just grab the profile, and then the path I can just select the edge instead of actually having to create another three-dimensional sketch. So we'll say OK to this, and that will create a nice cup path for me that changes in the X, Y, and the Z. So just a little bit faster productivity there for us. Next up we'll take a look at the enhancements for the view representations inside of the model. So here I have a new node inside the part level. So I have view master, that's my default. I'll create a new one here. I'll just rename this one to section so it's easy for me to reference. This will basically allow us to control different visibilities of the color of a component or also the section planes of a component inside of the part level. So here in the view tab you can see we have the half section, three quarter section. We have basically the same sectioning tools we might find in the assembly environment here now. And just like with the assembly updates the sectioning here is also done dynamically with a pull of the arrow. You can make that a finite value or you can also uh, just kind of eyeball it like I'm doing here. If you right click you can flip the sections. You can also readjust your virtual movement of that plane and also click done here. Um, you do always have to go into that and click done if you're using virtual movement. You can also change the color of the component here. Maybe we'll go to blue. Uh, maybe we'll go to coffee. And this view can also be locked, so no one accidentally modifies it. So I'll go ahead and lock that view. And you can see when I switch back and forth between master and section, it remembers not only the color, but also the sectioning. Let's do a three-quarter section now. Here I'll pick two planes this time. And I can also control the virtual movement here. So that first one was good. Now I'll pick my second plane and readjust for that one as well. So that's what I want to showcase with my three-quarter section. So I'll finish that. Now you also have to unlock and then relock it if you want those saves, those uh, changes to take place. So now I go back and forth between master and section. I get what I would expect to see. I should also mention that can be placed into the drawing environment like that as well. Next up, we'll take a look at the G2 enhancements for boundary patch. So here you can see I have a part with some deleted faces because I just didn't quite like the way the fillet tool was going to handle these. So I wanted to create some custom blending of the faces for for my purpose. And this is something you might commonly do in castings or plastic parts where the fillets just don't ever turn out right. So here I'm going to go ahead and put a boundary patch on. I'll make this first one tangent, which this is how it looks in 2011 Inventor. And on the other side we'll do the new enhancement for the boundary patch, these same four edges. This time, we'll, instead of making it tangent though, we'll do the G2 smooth. So also try to keep more of a curvature continuous flow between your faces that you're selecting. Now since this is a surface right now, I need to stitch it back together since it's now, it's now enclosed again. And doing this will turn it back into a solid for me. Let's go over to a surface inspection. I'll just do an auto range here on the Gaussian curvature. And you can see on the G2 side I have very little problems with the curvature, but on the G1 or tangent side I have a little bit more control issues with the surface as it was created. So that's a nice enhancement for anyone using surfacing or boundary patches or doing any kind of custom uh, or complex modeling procedures. 
Next up, we'll take a look at the fillet enhancements. So you can still click on an edge and start fillet, like I'm doing right here. You can control this with a, a little bit better enhanced uh, model manipulation toolbar that's on screen. Like I can change this to full round. You can choose your face fillet option there as well. Now, one downside to this is if you want to start a variable fillet from scratch, you actually have to go in here and say add variable fillet after you've already picked an edge. So in order to deselect the edge you just had, you actually have to flip back to edge selection or that current edge set, and you have to remove it. So if you want to start a variable fillet from scratch, you probably should just go ahead and start the, the fillet tool traditionally from the ribbon. So here I'll just do a variable radius fillet on this. I'll pick uh, additional points on here. So I'll pick about 50%, 25 and about 75% of the distance. And again, that can be precisely done down there in that mini toolbar. So for each point I have there, I can adjust the radius one at a time. So I'll adjust that one there at point three. We'll switch back to point two and adjust that radius. Jump back to point one, which is the middle middle of this edge here. Also adjust that that value a little bit. And this will also provide real time error checking. So if it if it goes in the red and you can't see the fill being created anymore, then that's a good indication that your values may be too large or too small. So let's adjust the end and the start here a little bit more to get what I want. Go ahead and approve that. Actually, before I do that, let me remove the other edge set from the other side. So this is what I was talking about, where you sometimes have to switch back to another edge set to remove uh, a fillet you may not want. It's just a little bit nicer to start a variable fillet from the traditional um, fillet command. Now with the mirror, um, this has also been enhanced in 2012 to better handle mirrored fillets. So I'm going to create a nice quick little mid work plane here to mirror around the middle of this part. Then I'll start my mirror tool and I'll go ahead and mirror my fillet across. What's nice about this is when I mirror this complex fillet, it's always going to be updating based on the one side. So I can just change one and the other one automatically updates with it. So let's jump back into that uh, variable fillet on that side of the part. And also want to showcase that the variable fillet has also been added to the G2 smooth condition to make the blending a little bit smoother on this side. There we go. And the other side updates correspondingly. Next up, we'll take a look at the face draft enhancements. This is a tool that uh, I like the enhancement they added to it, but I don't like what they've done with the mini toolbar with this command. So what we do here first though is create a sketch. And I can also go in here and project cut edges to get my edges that I want for my party line. But also notice there's projected 3D sketch in here. That was added to 2012's projection pull down, but it's a tool that's been in Inventor for a very long time. It's just a little bit faster to be able to do it from that pull down. Normally, you would have to create a new 3D sketch and then you'd have to use that project uh, to, to a curve. Uh, so having it in that pull down is a little bit nicer. Now, getting back into the face draft command here, you can see there's a new option inside of this on the left hand side. So you have your traditional fixed edged, fixed plane. And you can also do a parting line. So I'm going to select that. And there's a little bit of a bug here though, because I can only go one way in the mini toolbar. For some reason it won't let me select symmetric or asymmetric. And this is of the 2012 shipment build, so I expect that might be addressed in a hotfix. But as of right now, you can't switch to symmetric or asymmetric from the mini toolbar. So if you had to do a parting line operation, which is the, the new enhancement here, and you had to do either um, symmetric or asymmetrical, if you want to switch back and forth between those, you'll have to do that in the dialog box instead. So let me put a draft angle on this one, let's say 15 degrees. You can see right now it is uh, symmetrical, it is 
changing my 15 degrees, but I can't change it to asymmetrical dialog box. So here I'll change that to asymmetrical, do 15 and negative 5. And you can see if I try to switch it again back to one way or try to use that mini toolbar there again, it kind of cancels out what I was doing. So that's a that's a bug. No no easy way to say that one. But realistically, with uh, face draft, I'm not finding this mini toolbar very helpful. I'm finding the dialog box still here very much in control of what I want to do with the face draft. Okay, next up we'll take a look at the enhancement here that was also included in the 2011 bonus pack. This is the display extended information after the feature node. So this will basically make your nodes in your browser a little bit smarter. They'll tell you more about what you want to have about the feature. So like face draft here it has by 10 and by negative 5. If I change these values in the face draft, you'll see that extended name behind face draft 3 also update. So you can also see there's some cuts, there's the new solid operations. Uh, for holes, it tells you the values of the, that you have in the hole command. So here let me change the hole from this uh, current value of 0.406 to 375. You'll see that will update my browser node. A little bit easier to keep track of what you're working on. Here we're doing open to take a look at the enhancements to the translation translation system. So with Katia, we can go up to version 20 and export 19 uh, for those releases. Parasolids, we can do version 23, export as well for 23, and for NX, we can do version 7.5. I will also mention that it does have the full capability of the Rhino translator that was on the Autodesk Labs website as well, has been included in here. So you can also bring in Rhino files. Um, I've been using Inventor since uh, R4, and I've never once had to bring in a Rhino file, but uh, there are some of you out there that might need that. So here I'm going to bring in my Katia file. Notice that I do have a little bit different of a node in my browser over there. That actually functions as the repair environment, which we'll take a look at in just a little bit. But as far as modifying this existing Katia file, if we dig into that, we can find base1. If we right-click on that, we can do our edit solid, but there's an application option that controls where that's going to go. So the default will be Inventor Fusion, which Inventor Fusion is a 2012 release now. If I want to do it in the traditional legacy solid edit environment that's been around forever, this is where I would change that. So I can do my extender contract bodies that way. And then whichever option you have set there, when you fire edit solid, it'll take you to that environment, whichever one you chose. If I do edit form, or edit copy of form, these will also take you to Fusion. Now those are traditionally found in the alias design add-in, but for the Inventor Fusion 2012, they actually put that stuff in there. You know That used to be a $5,000 alias package you had to buy, but now it's actually fully blown into uh, Inventor Fusion. If I right-click on the topper node there, um, that's the repair node, so it can take me into re repair bodies environment, which is also new. So let's take a look at that. Let's go out and find an IGES file. Now this repair environment is very similar to the construction environment, but it's been enhanced a little bit. Um, you can still take things to construction and work on them, but the idea is construction will eventually go away, and the repair environment will replace that, because they can do a lot more with this new coding they have in the repair environment than they could in the traditional construction. So this is very important if you work with a lot of imported data. Let's use repair bodies here. We have a find errors. Depending on what you have in, as the import, you may or may not get errors out of it with these surfaces. Technically, there's nothing wrong with the surfaces, so there's no errors there. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and stitch this together. And I'm also going to find uh, remaining gaps and free edges. So this is part of the stitch tool. So it's going to highlight where those errors are at for me, or the potential gaps in the stitch. Now once I've located these, it's then my job to go through and use some of the traditional um, commands you might have found in construction, but they're also duplicated here in repair to go through and adjust the surfaces to close everything up to eventually then turn it into a solid. So things like boundary patch or boundary trim, edit regions, extract loop, those sorts of things will be important for me to use here.
So basically right there I would use an edit regions, extract the loop, and perhaps uh, repatch that up. We also have a transfer surface option in here. This will help you group the data together. Especially if you have existing solids. And you use, use finish to get out of there. Now again, you could go into construction still if you wanted to, but uh, the recommendation here is to go through the repair environment. So let's take a look at the enhancements to the rib command in here as well. When we start rib, we'll notice right away the command looks a lot different. We still can pick our profiles and our directions. That's actually laid out a little bit easier, I think. So I'm just going to pick these profiles. I'll flip it the opposite direction to showcase I'm going into the part the correct way. So you might have to flip that arrow as soon as you start the tool to make sure you're getting the right rib you want. So also on the left there you can see you can do a rib or a web. Let's add a thickness here, make it a little bit more visible. Let's do about four millimeters. And this is going in both directions from that profile sketch. And our two next termination will keep it inside of the faces we have there. The draft, which used to be on the main part of the dialog box, is now a different tab up here. So we can do a maintain of the thickness at the top or the root of the rib. And we can also put our draft angle on in here and see some nice updates. On the boss tab, we can also add additional bosses to this as well. Now, when you have your profile sketch for your rib, what's going to determine whether a boss gets selected or not will be if you have a center point laid down to that profile sketch. So I actually have six of them here. And you can also use a select all for the centers, which automatically gets all your center points on that sketch. So here we'll put a diameter in, make it a little bit bigger. You can also see there's an offset to see how high it is raised above the initial rib that's getting created. And we can also add our own additional draft angles here for the bosses. So we'll say OK to that. You're going to see a nice uh, set of ribs and bosses get created for that. Well, what if you don't need the ribs? What if you just want to create some bosses and have some stiffening ribs, but not ribs that go the entire length of the part? Well, there's some nice enhancements to just the boss tool as well. So this was one of those plastic features that was also introduced into Inventor 2010 a couple years ago. But we see some nice enhancements here to add additional geometry um, inside of this tool so we don't have to do it afterwards. So here I'll add a fillet to the bottom of the rib. See how it changes over to a threaded type, the thread side. We can go full depth, a certain depth, or through a particular piece of geometry. Let's make this a little bit bigger than 6.6. .6. Let's go 10. You can see that'll update in size. We'll make the interior part of that a little bit bigger as well. We'll do 6.5. If we change the depth, this also will update automatically on the screen for you, so you can see it as it's happening. You can control the interior taper and also the exterior. So let's do a little bit 4 on there and make it a little bit wider at the bottom. And on the ribs tab, we can add these stiffening ribs. So by default there, I had two turned on. You can see the geometry that controls the stiffening rib. We also can add fillet options down here too. So if you want to put fillets on automatically, this saves you time so you don't have to use a rule fillet afterwards. So we'll do three stiffening ribs. We'll, we'll adjust the angle here to turn these a little bit. So you can see as I change that, the bosses will actually adjust where these stiffening ribs are at. Let's stick with 15 there. And let's go ahead and add a fillet onto that as well. Now those little dots on the actual boss, you see those green dots? Those can also be adjusted manually on screen if you want. But I like using the dialog box to control this in a lot of ways. So we'll say OK to this. And this will take a little bit longer. I mean, I'm creating six bosses here some stiffening ribs, some fillet geometry. I'm creating a lot of things that I had to do, um, if I had to do them separately, it would create a lot of separate features and add a lot of history to my tree. But this boss tool allows me to do it all in a more consolidated manner. So I hope you liked the uh, look at the modeling enhancements for Inventor 2012.